Okay, that's the first one. Y equals two cos x plus one. So I have three there, but that is three five. So guys, if we're just thinking quickly, if it's y equals two cos x, then the amplitude now is two, all right? So as opposed to normally, as opposed to normal, if you don't have that plus one, it's a both on two down to negative two. But now we're going one unit up. So instead of going from two as a maximum value, it's going to be a plus one, it's going to be a three. And instead of the minimum value being negative two, it's going to be one plus one, plus one, and that's the negative. Plus one is negative one. So, guys, there is an issue on this graph, and that is that we don't know what the x is. And the graph here. I'm talking about the point where the graph actually goes through the x axis, where you can guess, right? But I wouldn't suggest that you do that. I just need to show you how to solve this equation, which we're going to do later on in the course, right? Once you've done that, you will actually be able to calculate your existence. Okay, so maybe let's just put, let's just plot points there, just so that we remember. They always say, guys, in the instructions when you're doing a graph, they always say, Label the intersect with the axis, something like that. All right, so you would actually have to label those two points, but at the moment we don't know how to calculate when we but I want to calculate this now by showing you the methods that don't make sense. So I am still going to keep the helping that with it. Okay, so now if it's fine if you don't label them, but it makes it easier. For all of the other graphs, you don't have the x intersects were points that you would have to plot in here. That's just the first one where the x intersects are like in between points that you have to plot. Okay, so remain again from 0 to 360, range from negative 1 to 3. Any questions on that one? All right. All right, let's look at number 8 y equals 3 cos x. Right, so that one doesn't just up or down, it's just straight. The amplitude is three now, the A value is three. So the highest point is positive three, the lowest point is negative three. And you see that in the range as well, the range goes from negative three to positive three. You just have to remember to label the ones that are not on that. <laughs> Any questions on this one? Okay, now guys, tan is different, right? We know that tan is the one that doesn't have that kind of wavy shape, it has a different shape. Tan also has um, asymptotes, which the other ones don't have. So if we are going to just do this one together, when you're drawing your axes now, guys, we're actually going to have to have a point every 45 degrees. Okay, so when you used to go 0 to 90, you have to actually have a notch there in between all of your values. Let me just move this a bit. It's not on the moment. Oh, dear, that's all I want to do. Sorry. <clears throat> okay, Okay, you can keep your y axis as it was, but now the x axis we just need more points. Okay, you can make the distance a bit further if you want.
And as the time goes, before you start putting it into a calculator, it has a different period. Okay, so the, the period of the time graph. Thank you, sir. <laughs> the period of the time graph is 180 degrees. So that's different from sine and cos. Okay, sine and cos is 360, tan is 180. You have to choose when you do that, right? That's like fear because you have to remember. Uh, remember, what do we do to get a set? We always take the period and we divide it by four. Okay, it's going to be the same method. Set is always the same formula, guys. Whatever your period is, you divide by four. That is the step that you're going to have to type into the calculator. So it's very important that you do actually calculate that and that you understand that it is different for tan bar. Okay, so the step is going to be 180 divided by four, which is now actually 45 degrees, which is why we have more notches on our x axis. Okay, because now we're going to have to clock a point. Or something, it's not actually always going to be point. We do have to indicate something at every 45 degrees instead of 90. Okay, that's important. So, guys, I'll need to do your coffee and work. Just the step is going to be different. The step is going to be 45 degrees. Yes, you are the same problem. Um, Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, guys, if you've done the table or you're getting an error, yeah. okay, it says error in the table. Guys, that is an asymptote. You guys remember that the time graph has an asymptote, like a dotted line. So, wherever it says error in the table, that is the asymptote. So, I'll just show you quickly how we're going to indicate that. Your first point is zero, zero. Your next point is 45 degrees and one. Then where you have your error, you're going to do a dotted line, all right? A line that is vertical. I forgot that word for a second. A vertical dotted line at x equals 90. Okay, so I'm going to try and do it there. All right, so you have to eliminate that, right? You do have to do that dotted line. And you're going to do that every time it says error. It's going to say it again in the table. So the next one is going to be 135 and negative 1, 180 and 0, and then 225 and 1. So you're going to make three points. Then you're going to have your dotted line again at 270. Okay, because at 270 again it says error. And then you just put in your next two points on there. Now, guys, I think you probably remember the shape of this graph, right? You probably remember that it should go up towards the asymptote. But the reason for that, I just show you quickly why that actually is. If you want putting in x values, right? Because this is just an equation. If you want to know what a, what the y value is at a specific x value, you can just type it in, in the place of x. So we know that tan 45, right? Because where, we, where x is 45 degrees, tan 45, that's one. Okay, so that's another way in which you could calculate it. If you maybe are stuck with a calculator that doesn't have table function, you can literally type in all of the x values that you have to have, and it will give you the y values. But now let's see what happens after 45. Okay, because we have a point at 45 and then we have an asymptote. You might not always know or remember what actually happens in between them. So let's take tan of 50, right? So we agree that 50 is after 45. 
but it's going to be 490. Okay, so if I change 45 to 50, I now I'm getting 1, 1, 1,19. That's bigger than 1, all right? That's 1, 1, 1, 9. Let's do tan 60. We're getting root 3, that's 1, 7. That's another value that's a little bit bigger than 1, 1, 1, 9. Okay, if we do tan 70, now we're getting 2, 7. That's even bigger than the 1, 7. If we're then doing tan 80, we're getting 5,6. That's even higher. Do you guys see why the graph is going up? Because we literally are getting bigger, wider. Right? At tan 80, y is supposed to be 5,6. I don't know why y axis isn't even going up to 5. All right. So that is why, guys, your shape is actually going to go up towards the asymptote. It's important that you're not going to touch the asymptote. All right. So I'm going to try and do it. Yeah, like that. You just need to indicate that shape. Okay. It needs to go towards the asymptote, but it can't ever touch or cross that asymptote. If you were to sum in points between 90 and 135, right? As you see what was happening in here, you would get points that are smaller and smaller here as we're getting closer to the asymptote. So on this side, our graph is going down towards the asymptote. And at the top, it is again going up towards the asymptote, like that. What is happening? <laughs> and then from 360 again, it's going to go down towards the asymptote, like that. Okay, you would have to label all of the points that are not on the axis, all right? So all of those in between points, please do that. I'm going to try and squeeze mine in here. It's 45 and 1. At the bottom here, we have 135 and negative 1. That's all we're coming from the table, I guess. All right? The one at the top there is 225 and 1. And then the last one here at the bottom is 315 and negative 1. Now, guys, the reason why the period of the time drop is 180 is because we haven't really spoken about what period actually means, right? The period of the graph is actually how long it takes for a total graph to complete itself, right? So if we're looking at this time graph, it's very easy to see here. That is one full time curve, right? Between the two asymptotes. Whatever is happening there, that is one full time curve. And if we're going from 90 to 270 degrees, that is actually 180 degrees difference between those two. So I'm going to write here at the bottom. You can just make a little bracket there. That is one full curve in 180 degrees. Right, that is what the period actually means. So if they're giving you a graph and you don't know what the period is, you can check what is the difference? How far, how long does it actually take for one full time curve in time for the constant to copy the graph? A full sine curve, what do you guys think that is? That's from zero up to one, down to negative one, back to zero. That's one full curve, all right? One who like complete the top ones. For the cos drop, same thing. I'll go back to them now so you can just see them briefly. But for the cos drop, one full curve is from one, down to negative one, back up to one. Okay, and that also happens in 300 degrees. We'll go back to those diagrams just now. So we can pull that. Okay, let's quickly look at. Um, I just want to use one more thing to write a lot of stuff. Okay, so 
form and it is at this sign graph, for example. That is one full sign curve. Okay. From the starting point, in this case, down to negative one, up to one, and then down to zero again. All right. So that's like one full, yeah, one full curve. That's on it. Since we have a degree, it's from zero to 360. And for the closed curve, this is one full curve. All right. From one, down to negative one, and back up to the starting point. So it's always from the starting point back to the starting point. Okay. That is one full curve for those ones. Guys, I just want us to write down the domain and range because it's a little bit different for the hand graph. Okay, the domain is the same, but the range is going to be different. So for this one, the domain, oops, domain, again, just like the other ones, the domain is what you have for its axis. That is what they are going to do in the question. So again, we are going from zero to 360 degrees. So the domain is the same in this case. Because, like I said earlier, I'm actually not going to get to it today. We'll have to do it tomorrow. We can change the domain. Okay, it's not always going to be the same. So we'll have to look at the question for that. But the range here is different. Now, guys, range, remember, all the y values. Okay, now, is there a smallest y value on this graph? We plotted negative one, right? But what about that arrow that's going down? What does that mean? It's going to keep going, right? And for negative infinity, okay? And what about the biggest y value or, or maximum y value? Same thing, right? It's going to go up to positive infinity. So for the range, there are two things that you can write, guys. You can write y is an element of, now when you're doing infinity and negative infinity, go to not actual numbers. Okay, it's more like a concept. So we have to use a round bracket for that. Yes. So negative infinity and then positive infinity. All right, you can do that. Or if you want, you can actually just say y is an element of real numbers. Okay, that means that y is going to have a all the real numbers. Okay, it's going to go from the smallest, smallest, smallest one to the biggest, biggest, biggest one. Okay. So you can decide which what which of these two you want to write for the last four items. Okay, just quickly, 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 I would like you to draw one of these paragraphs on your own as y equals two tan x. Please just write that down. Y equals two tan x. You're going to set up your axes in exactly the same way. Y equals two tan x. And please write down the domain and range of that one as well. <laughs> Okay, 